The plot opens with Vivi Levian, an 18-year-old tiny rabbit who is unable to shapeshift into a human following the coming-of-age ceremony. She is from a noble family of shapeshifters, and they have officially labeled her a curse. As Vivi is taken to the Black Panther territory, her heart begins pounding with a fear of abandonment. She cries in pain, until she hears some footsteps approaching her. Vivi's fear increases, and when she opens her eyes, she encounters a handsome man picking her up. With cold eyes, a black uniform, and a blood-covered sword, Vivi instantly realizes this man is a Black Panther. Vivi is determined that she's about to become this man's meal, and she struggles to escape. That makes the man smile. Seeing that she's crying, the man smiles even more, wishing to see her cry, which confuses Vivi. However, that's only the beginning of her survival story in the crazy Black Panther world. Fortunately, the Black Panther brings Vivi to his home instead of eating her on the spot. She awakens on his bed, dazed and confused, while thinking of herself as his next meal. However, she refuses to give up and musters up the courage to escape. Consequently, she prepares to run away, but another Black Panther suddenly appears and catches her. He tells Vivi to be cautious because now she's master of his precious possession. Vivi fails to understand the situation, but the Black Panther reveals she's his lord's beloved emergency meal. Vivi's doubts become clear and she falls unconscious due to the distress. Later, she opens her eyes and overhears a physician talking to the previous panther about herself. The physician claims that Vivi neither releases human pheromones nor she can shapeshift into a human being. He deduces she's just an ordinary rabbit, however, the other panther claims she can perfectly understand human speech. Still, the physician declares that Vivi is no more than an ordinary animal and leaves. After his departure, the other panther introduces himself as Rudd Everin, Ahin's personal servant. He continues to tease Vivi, and she gets flustered, but Ahin abruptly arrives. Vivi's fear for survival increases as she observes him talking to Everin about herself and reveals he'll be eating her tomorrow. Everin pays heed to his lord's command and prepares to inform the cook. He suggests a grilled rabbit would be delicious, meanwhile, Vivi continues to shiver in fear. Later at night, we see Vivi lying beside a hen, contemplating whether she should escape or not. Unfortunately, she realizes that it's unimaginable to survive in the Black Panther territory all alone. However, if she miraculously manages to survive, she's pretty sure that her family won't be too welcoming. She turns to Ahin, and out of gratitude, reaches out her paw to pat him on his head. To her surprise, he suddenly wakes up, leaving Vivi completely shocked. To get hold of the situation, she begins crying, which catches the attention of Ahin. He asks her if she's scared of being eaten, and she nods her head. Afterwards, Ahin tells her to cry more, and Vivi realizes he's obsessed with tears. Nevertheless, she desperately begins to rub her eyes, hoping that tears would come out, but nothing happens. Ayn capitalizes on this opportunity and tells her he'll eat her the day after tomorrow. Then he swiftly grabs her near himself and tells her to remain quiet as he falls asleep. The next morning, Ayn departs for his everyday activities and leaves Vivi in the hands of his maid, Meme. Luckily, Vivi's day turns out to be a great one as she begins enjoying her time with Meme. Thanks to her, Vivi takes a tour of the huge mansion, enjoys sauna baths, and eats luxurious food. To enjoy their time further, Meme takes her to the lavish gardens, where Vivi notices the entrance gate of the mansion. She instantly uses this as an opportunity to escape and swiftly begins to run towards the space between the gate. Her perfect mission is interrupted by a dagger thrown by Meme who captures her and tells her to stay within the mansion because the outside world is quite dangerous. Later at night, Vivi hears the footsteps of someone coming into her room. As she opens her eyes, she encounters a severely wounded Ahin standing in front of her. Suddenly, Everin arrives with a physician and rushes to aid his lord. The physician begins stitching Ahin's wounds and Everin blames the werewolves for this vicious act. Consequently, he suggests sending their corpses back to the wolf territory to show the dominance of the panther clan, but Ahin refuses. With bloodlust in his eyes, Ahin proposes the idea of sending 30 of his men to the wolf territory to take the head of their superior instead. Afterward, the physician closes Ahin's wounds and departs from the room. Ahin's attention then turns to Vivi, and he praises her by calling her an intelligent animal. Later at night, he again begins teasing her, but this time smells a whiff of pheromones from her neck. He gets surprised because this smell only appears on the beasts that become human. However, believing her to be a rare species, he falls asleep while Vivi continues wondering about pheromones. The following morning, Ahin gets shocked to see that all of his wounds have been completely healed. He assumes Vivi might be responsible for this strange phenomenon and orders Everin to investigate the noble families in the rabbit territory. He tells him to find out if any rabbit from those families has disappeared or died. The next day, Vivi meets Ahin's mother, who's the current head of the Panther clan. She becomes delighted to know that Vivi can understand human speech and orders Memi to give them some privacy. She then begins playing with Vivi and perceives that her son is raising her as food. Naturally, Vivi immediately gets scared, but the woman advises her not to be extremely obedient to Ahin. Furthermore, she recommends Vivi to keep him intrigued because if he loses his interest in her, he might devour her. She then tells Vivi that she smelled a tiny whiff of pheromones from her, which leaves her confused. In the next scene, we see Vivi contemplating how Ahin and his mother were able to sense pheromones from her body. Vivi is perplexed because pheromones only appear after humanization is complete and ponders if she can still become a human. 
Suddenly, Ahin returns and informs Vivi that he got attacked by the Wolf Clan again. While pointing a wound on his face, he requests Vivi heal him again, but she refuses to do so. Out of annoyance, Ahin decides to devour her, leading Vivi to instantly change her mind. Nevertheless, she is still clueless about how she's going to heal him and begins to lick his face. Much to her surprise, the wound straight away disappears and Ahin expresses his gratitude by telling her that he liked what she did. The following morning, Vivi again meets Ahin's mother, who introduces herself as Valence Grace. Valence then instructs Vivi to hold her breath for a brief moment and press down on her blood vessels. Surprisingly, Vivi begins experiencing a strange sensation and Valence advises her to remember this feeling. Later, Evrin and Ahan take Vivi to the city in a carriage. Vivi begins comprehending that this is the first time she's ever seen the outside world. Overwhelmed by the emotions, Vivi wonders if someday she would be able to travel the world all by herself. Suddenly, they arrive at their destination and Vivi has no idea where she is until she notices the temple in front of her. She experiences a sense of fear when she realizes that this temple is of the same priest who declared her a curse in front of her family. She begins recalling the horrible events from the past and refuses to enter the temple. However, Ayn places her in his upper pocket and goes inside with Evren. Ayn places her on a table and proceeds proceeds to talk to the priest. Again, Vivi's memories begin to overflow as she recalls all the indignity she faced in front of her family. Out of embarrassment, she runs away from the hall while Ahan and Evren begin to follow her. Using her fast speed, Vivi effortlessly leaves them behind and finds herself standing in front of the statue of the animal god. With tears in her eyes, Vivi complains to God that why she's the only one to suffer in the world of shapeshifters, but Ayn arrives and picks her up. He breathes a sigh of relief to find out that she was unable to escape, while Evren also arrives on the scene. Due to her strange act, Evren concludes that Vivi is an atheist and dislikes the temples. Afterward, much to her astonishment, Ayn decides to leave everything thing and return home since Vivi dislikes the place. In the next scene, we see Ahin expressing his dominance to Vivi by telling her that beasts like him can be quite possessive. Furthermore, he claims that since he is the one who picked her up, she belongs to him only. Vivi fails to perceive his thoughts and wonders if he's trying to intimidate her. The next morning, during a stroll in the lush garden, Vivi again encounters Lady Valence. She teaches Vivi a unique way to exude her pheromones by gathering energy in her lower abdomen. Luckily, Vivi manages to feel a little sensation, but the strenuous exercise exhausts her and she becomes tired. Impressed by her efforts, Lady Valence gives her a book about pheromones. Later, while reading the book, Vivi learns that pheromones are an innate scent that only the animal can possess. Each species emanates chemicals through unique abilities, offense methods, and superior-inferior relations. However, in the case of rabbits, it is the method of evasion that's used to exude pheromones. Suddenly, Vivi hears a noise and turns around only to see a hen and Evren laughing at her. The sight of watching a tiny rabbit reading a book about pheromones becomes a joy of laughter for them, while Vivi becomes annoyed. The following morning, Vivi learns that Lady Valence and Ahin both are busy today. She's jumping around in the garden with Memmi, and suddenly, an unknown man picks her up. Dazed by the beautiful golden eyes and pink hair of the man, Vivi wonders if he's a herbivore. However, her doubts become clear when he opens his mouth as his fangs shock her. She becomes convinced that he's a beast and begs Memmi to save her. The unknown man begins sniffing her body and notices a strong scent of Ahin's pheromones. Vivi continues to shiver in fear. However, Ahin arrives and orders the man to put her down. He picks her up and gets disgusted by the smell of lion's scent on her body, while the innocent rabbit remains clueless. Afterward, he takes her back to his room and becomes aggravated by the remains of the lion's scent on her. It is revealed that Run Manions is the name of the lion shapeshifter and Ahan dislikes him. At that moment, Evren arrives with his report on the rabbit family. He discloses that no rabbit has gone missing among the noble families of the rabbit. Despite expanding his search among the middle and lower rabbit families, he deduces no one has disappeared. Baffled by the origin of Vivi, Evren concludes she must have been abandoned by her family. He even mentions a rumor of a rabbit child born out of wedlock. Enraged by the vicious acts of Vivi's family, Ahn orders Evren to kill anyone who comes out to find her. During the night, Meme bathes Vivi to get rid of the lion's whiff from her body. While doing her job, she reveals that Run Manion is a high-ranking person who comes as a representative from the Lion Clan whenever he comes to negotiate with them. Moreover, he's staying at Ahin's palace for the upcoming Grace Family Ball. Memmi finishes cleaning Vivi and advises her to refrain from going outside until Run leaves. In the next scene, Vivi becomes ecstatic because now Ahin will not be able to smell the lion's scent from her body. On the other hand, Evren suggests giving her a name as it's been a month since Ahin adopted her as his pet. Ahin gets intrigued by the idea and deduces she may already have a name. As Evren 
Silver departs from the room, and instructs Vivi to put her paws into ink and write down her name on paper. After a lot of struggle, she manages to write down her name while Ayn gets delighted to know she's called Vivi. Because of his possessive nature, he instantly picks her up and begins licking her body to erase the lion's scent. Vivi's heart begins pounding and the strong scent of Ayn's pheromones makes her dizzy. Unable to withstand the powerful sensation, she ultimately falls unconscious. Later on, she regains consciousness and extends her paw toward a deeply asleep Ahin. But something strange happens. She sees a beautiful human hand instead. The scene then shifts to the Livian house where Vivi's mother and brother wonder what happened after their men abandoned Vivi in the Black Panther territory. The son deduces Vivi crossed the border and might have sneaked into the Grace family's residence as it's the closest to the forest. He assures his mother not to worry about Vivi and suggests sending their men to investigate the outcome. Vivi's mother agrees to the idea while hoping that she's dead. Back at Hen's mansion, Vivi becomes disappointed to see herself in the mirror, as she's still a rabbit. Hen departs for an unknown job and later Vivi runs into Lady Valence. Vivi becomes excited as she's meeting her after a long time and begins circling joyfully. Then, she tries to explain the strange phenomenon she experienced last night to Lady Valence hoping that she'll understand. Unfortunately, she fails to interpret Vivi's actions and instead orders Memi to prepare a meal for Vivi. Coming back to the Black Panther territory, we see the Levian servants discovering some bones in the forest. Suddenly, Ahin and Evren appear out of nowhere questioning the intruders if they are searching for a rabbit. They get flustered as they weren't expecting the head of the Panther clan to arrive on the scene. Evren reckons that the cloaked rabbits are searching for Vivi and Ahan becomes furious. Overwhelmed with bloodlust, he decides to kill them all, and hearing this, the rabbits try to flee. As they begin to scatter, Ahan orders his Black Panthers to attack them. Moreover, the impact of the powerful pheromones of Ahan immobilizes them, and the Black Panthers kill them. Ahan then turns his attention to the last survivor and begins to interrogate him to learn the truth about Vivi. Scared for his life, the culprit reveals Vivi is a shape-shifting human who has already turned 18 years old. This shocking fact overwhelms Ahan with confusion because he has never seen Vivi turn into a human. Afterward, the perpetrator claims she's nothing more than a cursed rabbit who has failed to shapeshift despite her coming of age. Vivi's character assassination fills Ahin's eyes with rage and he instantaneously kills the cloaked rabbit. Later on, Ahin calms down and contemplates that he forgot to ask about Vivi's family. Now that it's confirmed that she's a shapeshifter, Ahin understands why he was able to sense pheromones from her body. His affection towards Vivi enhances and he decides to keenly keep an eye on her. Everyone gets intrigued by the information and asks his lord to explain everything, but Ahin coldly refuses. He dodges the question and orders his panther Ash to attack Everin, causing him to run away out of desperation. On the other hand, we see Vivi reading the Book of Pheromones late at night. Much to her surprise, she finds out the Fox Clan has an abundance of pheromones, which leads to late humanization. Instead of turning human at the age of three, they transform at the age of five. With this new information, Vivi concludes her case is quite similar to Fox's, and she may have a chance to shapeshift into a human in the future. Just then, the suspicious maid arrives in Vivi's room and tries to grab her forcefully. Luckily, Vivi manages to dodge her, while the maid shapeshifts into a deadly wolf with bloodthirsty red eyes. Fear grips Vivi as she dashes towards the balcony company wondering why the wolf has the same red eyes as the Black Panthers. Unfortunately, she reaches a dead end as the wolf continues approaching her. She becomes scared and tears begin falling from her beautiful purple eyes. Suddenly, she looks down only to find a hen and run glancing at her in confusion. She tries to convey a message that she's in danger, but the simple-minded beasts fail to interpret her. Meanwhile, the wolf proceeds in her direction and attacks Vivi. Fortunately, Vivi manages to evade the attack but loses her balance and falls from the balcony. Ayn catches her on his head and notices the whiff of a wolf pheromones. All of a sudden, Meme arrives on the balcony calling out Vivi's name with her clothes stained with blood. Anne concludes that the situation has been solved for the moment and tells Vivi not to cry anymore. Later, Evren explains that the unnamed wolf was a cross between a wolf and a panther. He suspects the maid penetrated the home by posing as an applicant during the ball's recruitment process. Vivi is still bewildered, wondering why the maid attacked her. She could have gone out to hunt anything bigger if she was hungry, but she chose to hunt Vivi specifically. As she is Anne's personal meal, Vivi believes the wolf was inquisitive, so she chooses to put a stop to the situation. In the next scene, we see Vivi left all alone with Run and Meme. Run talks about the preparations for the upcoming ball with Meme, which piques the curiosity of Vivi. She recalls all the balls she attended during her stay in the rabbit territory and wonders how big it would be in this huge mansion. At night, Ayn tells Vivi that servants who violate orders are beheaded in his clan. He claims that since Meme failed to protect her as her guard and escort, she will be subjected to punishment. As her close friend, Vivi defends Meme and begs Ahin to spare her life. Surprisingly, Ahin agrees to do so, but on one condition, he tells her she's not allowed to cry in front of anyone except him. Furthermore, he claims she can only cry when he exclusively asks her to. Vivi fails to understand his intentions but agrees and they make a promise to each other. 
After a while, Vivi remembers the incident when, following Anne's bite on her neck, she saw a human arm stretching from her. She deduces that this strange phenomenon occurred because of Ahin's strong pheromones and decides to experiment with it again. At first, she approaches Ahin and confirms that he's in deep sleep. Afterwards, she extends her paw into his mouth, which is wide open to check if his fangs can enhance her humanization. Much to her disappointment, nothing happens but her paw gets stuck in his mouth, and he continues to suck it like a feeder bottle. The next morning, the day of the ball finally arrives, and Vivi gets excited while observing the beautiful ladies dressed in exquisite gowns. Suddenly, Meme appears and introduces Vivi to Fez, the Grace family's stylist. All Fez has been ordered to style Vivi, however, he gets overwhelmed by her charming and adorable personality. Much to Vivi's surprise, Meme tells her that she's going to be Lord Ahin's partner for today. Furthermore, she reveals that the Grace family holds a ball every half a year. The Lion and Bear clans are the most prominent ones who accept the invitation. On the other hand, after going through a series of experimental dresses, Fez finally dresses up Vivi with an adorable necklace and a tiny crown on her head. However, as much as Vivi wishes to enjoy the ball, she becomes flustered as she doesn't want to attract everyone's attention, especially the large group of canines dancing in the hall. Suddenly, Evan arrives and cheerfully volunteers to be her escort but becomes annoyed and lands a kick on his face. Evren becomes surprised by her kicking power and praises her for having the spirit of blood fighter. Nevertheless, later as Vivi is heading out to the ballroom with a hen, she hides herself in his pocket to protect herself from any danger. Before heading into the Grand Hall, Evren asks and the reason for choosing Vivi as his partner. A hen explains that if he already has a partner, he won't have to dance with anyone else. The guards outside the Great Hall greet the next head of the Panther Clan as Ahan goes inside with Vivi and Everin. Watching the enormous hall filled with beasts from different clans astounds Vivi. Everyone's attention turns to Ahan and Vivi as they enter the hall. Apparently, Vivi has become quite famous for being the pampered pet of the Grace family. However, after some time, she begins feeling dizzy due to the strong essence of the pheromones being exuded by the carnivores. Suddenly, Ahan and Vivi encounter Lady Valance who apologizes to Vivi for not being there for her when she was attacked. Vivi becomes happy and expresses her gratitude by doing a little paw shake with her. Just then, Vivi notices a sense of tension between Ahin and his mother. She deduces that perhaps they share a quite strenuous relationship, while Lady Valance discloses she hung the head of the deceased wolf at the front door as a warning sign. Later on, after awkwardly waltzing with Vivi, we see Ahin peacefully sitting on the sofa, while everyone else continues dancing. Out of boredom, Han begins speculating about the beasts from different clans while showing Vivi a couple from the Tiger and Hyena clans. However, Vivi begins feeling nauseous again and decides to go to the bedroom, but a red-headed woman arrives to greet Ayan. She's a member of the Fox Clan and begins flirting with Ahin while Vivi notices that she has quite strong pheromones. She asks Ahin to visit the Fox territory, but he respectfully refuses and she decides to leave. Afterward, it is revealed that polygamy is quite common in the Fox Clan, and the Fox Woman already has five husbands. Vivi becomes quite shocked but her nausea starts kicking in again. She feels difficulty in breathing in Ahin, out of confusion, puts her down on the floor. Vivi's patience ends as she is now unable to withstand the musty pheromones. Out of tolerance, she runs off while Ayn glances at her dazed and stunned. Overpowered by the wild aura, Vivi rushes into a random room and collapses. The pain begins to make her numb, and she loses consciousness for a while. As she wakes up, she finds a human hand reaching out to beautiful white hair. She wonders if she's dreaming as the mesmerizing hair reminds her of her mother. Stuck in confusion, she touches her face and realizes she's turned human. Baffled, she looks up into the mirror to see if it's true, and the very sight of her body surprises her. Finally, she's become human, but her body feels a little cold. Luckily, she sees a quilt near her and borrows it to protect her bare skin. Then she hides herself under a table, wondering what Ahin will think if he sees her like this. Negative thoughts begin to succumb to her mind and suddenly, she notices the sounds of footsteps approaching her. Scared, she wonders if it's Ahin, but the man turns out to be Run Mannions. Meanwhile, Run removes the tablecloth and sees a beautiful naked woman. Bewildered, he falls on the floor and Vivi seizes this opportunity to get away. Unfortunately, she stumbles over him and falls on his body, leaving him blushing out of confusion. In a flashback, we see that Run was lost in his thoughts, but suddenly saw Vivi rushing somewhere. Curious, he followed her into the room and waited outside until his patience ran out. Back in the present, the awkward situation between Vivi and Run cools down. Afterward, he inquires about her identity, but she becomes perplexed and doesn't answer him. However, he guesses she's Vivi who has finally completed humanization. He asks her if she's the shapeshifter rabbit Vivi, but again, she completely denies it. Unconvinced, he sniffs her hair and notices the strong whiff of Ahin's pheromones. Moreover, he observes that she possesses the unique purple eyes of the rabbit clan, leaving her puzzled. The atmosphere becomes serious, but suddenly the door of the room opens and Ahin arrives with Everin. Ahin loses his temper when he sees Run and orders Everin to hand him his sword. Everin, however, refuses and advises Ahin to handle the problem peacefully since Run is the heir of the lion clan. Meanwhile, 
A hen, filled with jealousy, refuses to listen to Everin and turns his attention to Run. He confronts him about how he can steal his precious belongings in his territory without asking for permission. Puzzled by the accusation, Run looks at his side and sees Vivi back in her rabbit form hiding under the quilt. He picks her up, wondering what happened, which further adds fuel to the fire. Anne believes Run was trying to kidnap Vivi and prepares to slice him in half. On the other hand, Vivi kicks Run across the face, worried that he might spill the truth about her humanization. Watching her fight for herself calms down Ahin as he takes her back from Run. However, the allegations of him stealing a rabbit reach the crowd, and he's labeled a thief. The following day, he explains himself to Lady Valence and decides to leave to avoid further humiliation. While walking out of the mansion, Run recalls how Vivi's human body was full of Ahin's pheromones. Moreover, he begins to wonder if the arrogant hair of the Panther clan, Ahin, had fallen in love with Vivi. Anyhow, when he thinks about how Vivi reacted to her human form, he realizes she doesn't want Ahin to know about her humanization, but doesn't understand the reason. Later at night, Ahin complains to Vivi that he's disappointed in her. He's heartbroken and asks how she could leave him her master for a lion. Everin begins reading all of his dialogues to Vivi, but something unexpected occurs. While holding his sword, Ahin suddenly turns his attention to Everin, claiming he was addressing him, not Vivi. Embarrassed, Everin apologizes for his mistake, and Ahin orders him to leave the room before he snaps. Ahin then excitedly picks up Vivi and reveals that he knows she's a shapeshifter rabbit, leaving her surprised. He then admits that's why he scented her body with his strong pheromones to let everyone know who she belongs to. Afterwards, Vivi glances at his face and presumes that his pheromones are the real reason behind her humanization. Adding more to the ongoing situation, Ahin reveals that some members of her clan crossed the panther territory while looking for her. They wanted to confirm if she's dead, but he killed them out of anger. Ahin also claims that he knows that she's never been able to shapeshift into a human and Vivi becomes stupefied. Much to her astonishment, he then admits that he likes the fact that she's a rabbit. If she were a human, it would have been difficult for him to keep her with him. However, despite his sincere desires, Vivi still wishes to become a fully transformed human one day. The next day, to gain control of her unique pheromones, she begins training in the ground. Later on, while passing through, Ahin and Evren notice her doing weird actions. A confused Ahin then asks Meme about Vivi's peculiar behavior and learns that she's training. Afterwards, he assigns his pet panther Ash to protect Vivi and catch her if she ever tries to run away. He strictly informs Ash that Vivi's her master from now on and she has to guard her. Meanwhile, Vivi successfully finishes her practice of releasing pheromones but becomes scared when she encounters Ash standing behind her. She begins to feel the same vibes she felt with the bloody wolf and her feet become frozen. Much to her surprise, Ash's obedient nature clears all her worries and they become quite friendly with each other. Later at night, Ahin feels the smell of Vivi's pheromones has become quite strong. Afterwards, despite her reluctance, he bites her neck to conceal the smell with his pheromones. Sometime later, she feels difficulty in breathing and wakes up in the middle of the night. Surprisingly, she finds out that she is again turned into a human and is lying in the heavy arms of Ahin. Moreover, the power of her pheromones is so strong they have put him into a deep sleep. She carefully tries to shove him away, but it seems like he wants to cuddle, which makes it difficult for Vivi to escape. Luckily, after some effort, she manages to break herself free, but as she gets out, she encounters Ash staring at her with her predatory eyes. Eventually, when Ash doesn't make any move, Vivi realizes she's soundly sleeping with her eyes wide open. During this tense situation, Alhin instinctively again grabs Vivi, and she becomes agitated. Her nervousness, however, ends when she notices he's still fast asleep. She then recalls a conversation with Lady Valence and deduces that the unique ability of her pheromones is to put others to sleep. Afterward, she tries to get out of Alhin's arms to cover herself. Ultimately, she manages to do so, but just then, Ash wakes up. To her surprise, she immediately recognizes Vivi's scent even in her human form and doesn't create a hassle. She also perceives that Vivi's looking for something to cover herself and randomly puts a quilt on her shoulders. Ash's act of kindness affects Vivi so much that she decides to sleep with her on the floor. The following morning, Ahin wakes up from a well-rested sleep and finds Vivi sleeping next to Ash in her rabbit form. This adorable sight makes him smile and just before getting out of bed, he notices strands of white hair near him. He immediately realizes what it means and asks Vivi why she was sleeping on the floor. Flustered, she doesn't want to tell him the truth about her recent humanization. Therefore, when Ahin asks her if Ash took her away, she nods her head in response. Ahin then claims Ash must be punished and states from now on she would share a room with Everin. Feeling guilty, Vivi begs Ahin to reconsider his decision and suddenly, the dazzling sight of his naked shoulder begins to make her blush. She calls him a smug beast and refrains herself from falling into the devil's whisper. Ahin notices that she's blushing and decides to tease her further. He offers to show her more of his body but out of embarrassment, she shuts down her eyes. When she opens them, she witnesses Everin's face with his mouth wide open, which disappoints her. The scene then shifts to a ladies' tea party where we see a group of women discussing how lavish the Grace family's ball was. Suddenly, a few of them start talking about a rumor that says the next head of the Grace family is in love with his pet. His affection is so strong that he even brought her as his partner at the ball. 
Later on, when one of the women discloses that the pet is a cute little rabbit, a teacup falls on the floor. It is revealed that it fell from the hands of Vivi's mother, Lady Levian, who is in complete shock. In the next scene, we see a meeting between the carnivores where a mystery about an illegal drug is revealed. It confuses the pheromones of the shapeshifters and causes severe addiction that, in the worst case scenario, leads to death. On the other hand, we see a hen in a depressing mood. However, Run notices him. He wonders what's wrong with him, and just before he can ask, Anne questions him instead by asking if he saw any unusual activity at the ball, leaving Run flustered. After some brainstorming, Run concludes Vivi wouldn't want her human identity to be revealed and tells a hen nothing happened. The meeting then ends, and in the evening, him returns only to find that Ash is asleep. In reality, Vivi was using her as a subject to practice her pheromone skills and Ahin realizes it. He then takes Vivi and Ash on a random trip to a place unknown to them. Later, on their way to Endelris, a territory where all the drug activity is taking place, Everin suggests Ahin use disguise. He believes that the area will be swamped with dangerous people, however, Ahin doesn't pay any attention to his suggestion. He begins to tease Vivi instead, who's feeling anxious about the dangerous trip. Just then, Ahin reveals that he only wishes to spend more time with Vivi all alone. Everin gets surprised and says to Ahin that lately, he's been spending a lot of time with Vivi. His infatuation with her has become so persistent that he even joined his mother for a tea party with Vivi. On the other hand, Vivi herself wonders why a savage beast like Ahin would become charmed by a mere and tiny rabbit. Ahin tries to pick her up, but she fights back and bites his finger in her mouth. Seeing that, Everin suggests Ahin be careful, as he might get exposed to rabbit disease. Out of rage, Ahin then tells him to watch his mouth and read the drug report. It is revealed that according to the report, they need to obtain a drug sample and run an accurate analysis to check its effects. Ahin wonders how the drug entered the wolf territory and Everin guesses there might be a distributor here. Ahin then becomes determined to catch the culprit to find the origin of the drug. Suddenly, their wagon gets ambushed by a group of werewolf shapeshifters. To deal with the situation, Ahin goes outside while Vivi becomes panicked. Ahin has left her in the hands of Everin who assures her there's nothing to worry about. He reveals such things have happened multiple times and advises her to remain calm. Meanwhile, Ahin gets attacked by an arrow so he orders Everin to lock the doors and windows until he kills them. Suddenly, he receives a quiver of arrows but effortlessly deflects each of them with his sword. Watching this, Vivi gets scared and begins to worry about Ahin, but Everin suggests she relax. To assure her, he explains Ahin possesses extremely strong pheromones, so it is impossible for the werewolves to harm him. Just then, the wagon's window gets broken and Ahin's pheromones begin to flow inside causing trouble for Vivi. To cover the situation, she tries holding down her breath but starts feeling suffocated. As soon as she breathes the air, she experiences a feeling of dizziness and realizes she'll turn into a human soon. She consequently spirals into anxiousness, but Ash sees her and snatches her up so they may get away from the situation. On their way, Vivi starts feeling nauseous and luckily, Ash takes her to an abandoned house. However, she states that it's too dangerous to be far away from the wagon when suddenly two werewolves enter the house. They begin feeling the strong essence of Vivi's pheromones and find her in a weakened state with Ash guarding her. Tempted by the scent, they decide to kill both of them and Vivi begins shivering with fear. She knows Ash alone can't fight both of the shapeshifters at the same time and her power isn't effective against the wolf clan. However, much to their surprise, Ash instantly attacks them and a fight begins between them. Eventually, Ash begins to struggle against them but still gives her all to fight back while the scared Vivi watches the fight in distress. In the next scene, we see Ash run away with Vivi in her mouth and Everin wondered why. Out of curiosity, Ahin then ordered Everin to take care of the attackers and ran away to chase Ash. On his way, he assumes Vivi must have turned into a human since she's a shapeshifter rabbit who's already 18. He then recalls all the four times Vivi acted strange and ran away. From all the peculiar incidents, he concludes whenever Vivi takes in the pheromones of other beasts, she most likely turns into a human. Soon, he stumbles upon an abandoned house and opens the door only to witness something he never expected. He sees a crying Vivi in her human form holding a severely wounded Ash in her arms. Her purple eyes, white hair, and the scent of his pheromones from her body instantly make him realize the beautiful woman is Vivi. He discerns that she's hurt and puts his jacket on her body to cover her naked body. Afterwards, he examines Ash's body and notices that her wounds are much more severe than he thought. Consequently, he concludes she'll most probably die before they can reach a doctor, which devastates Vivi. She blames herself for her death and begins crying in agony. She continuously begs Ash not to die and suddenly, something unusual happens. Ayn interrupts her and tells her to take a look at Ash because her wounds have been healed. Overwhelmed with happiness, Vivi then claims that Ayn's extraordinary pheromones were the reason behind Ash's recovery. Hearing this, his expressions become serious and he asks Vivi who she is. The former white rabbit, who's now a little shy, tells him he recently called her by her name and Ayn begins to smile. Filled with joy, Ahan then holds her in his arms and asks her, don't you have a lot of things to say? 
Movie cheerfully replies, asking if he's going to interrogate her now. Unfortunately, their loving moment gets interrupted when Vivi begins to feel suffocated. She tells Anand she's unable to breathe and is feeling a lot of pain. Consequently, Anand advises her to slow down her breathing because her body just released an untrained pheromone. Still, Vivi is confused, so Anand slowly begins to get closer to her. He then reaches her neck and bites it to balance Vivi's unstable pheromones. She starts to breathe normally soon after Anand's pheromones start to circulate inside her body. Fortunately, her physical ache finally subsides as a result of the stabilization, but there's no strength left in her body. Soon, the dizziness goes away and she starts feeling better. Anne's mate Mayo inadvertently enters the room while they are enjoying their passionate moment and starts to panic. She departs after Ahan gently instructs her to wait outside. Everyone finds out that Ahan is inside at that very moment and starts repeatedly hammering on the door. He asks him if Vivi is alright and Ahan responds that she is. On the other hand, Vivi warns Ahan that something is wrong by pointing to her neck, which has a hickey carp on it. He smiles and informs her that this isn't the first time she's turned human. Vivi then asks him politely how much he knows about her and falls asleep. Later on, Avin comes out with Vivi in her rabbit form and orders Everin to tell him the report of the current situation. Everin then reveals they won the fight against the werewolves, but their wagons were overturned in the process. Afterward, he suggests to Ahan instead of going back to the mansion, it's best if they go to Endoris since it's closer. Curious about what happened while he was away, Everin says to Ahan he wants to ask a few questions. However, much to his dismay, Ahan shuts him down with a cunning smile. The scene then shifts to Endelris where Vivi finally wakes up and feels relieved. Meanwhile, one of the Endelris guys gets shocked to see how a tiny rabbit has been able to tame a vicious panther as its servant. The curious man is revealed as Harrington Rustin, Run's aide and the son of the Rustin family. Run tells him Vivi is Anne's emergency meal which surprises him while Vivi nods her head. After Harrington's introduction, Run asks her to shapeshift into a human so they can have a proper conversation. However, Vivi refuses and reveals it's not up to her own choice. Run begins to get skeptical and wonders if Vivi wishes to leak the Grace family's secrets. He also asked Vivi why she was wearing a quill over her body when he met her during the ball. He picks her up and takes her to the balcony, where they overhear some workers talking about the illegal drug. Ron becomes serious and with Vivi in her hand, he jumps off the balcony to question them about the drug. The workers are revealed to be from the Hyena clan and Ron prepares himself to knock them out. He starts wondering who he should knock out first and realizes that he has left his sword behind. Still, he gently asks the workers to hand over the drug, but one of them rushes at him and tries to punch him. Run quickly elbows him, and he falls unconscious while the other one tries to run away. Nonetheless, Run's strong pheromones make him stunned, and he catches up to him. Realizing that he'll be caught soon, the worker throws the bottle of the drug at Run. Inside the bottle turns out to be a powder that spreads all over Run's body. Surprisingly, he turns into a huge lion which leaves Vivi stunned in awe. On the other hand, we see Everin talking to Ahin about how they have failed to obtain the illegal drug and find its distributor. Everin then unexpectedly asks Ahin if he intends to keep the rabbit with himself. The smart Black Panther counters his question by saying he was the one who advised him to keep anything that seems useful. Hen then admits that even though Vivi's been living with him for months, he feels like she's still afraid of him. With a serious face, Everin agrees and adds that she looks like she hates him. They unexpectedly come across the hyena worker fleeing with Vivi pursuing him. Additionally, they see an unusual sight of a lion chasing after a young rabbit, and then a black panther following the lion. The scene becomes quite awkward, and when they see Harrington chasing after the lion, they realize the situation. Consequently, they start chasing the lion by following Harrington. Later at night, we see everyone roaming around the streets, searching for Run, Vivi, Ash, and the hyena culprit. Everin then wonders the reason Run transformed into a lion. Ahin uses his sharp mind and deduces that either Run was bored or he got exposed to the illegal pheromone drug. He orders everyone to scatter and finds the missing people. Before the departure, Harrington notices Ahin, who's always calm in every situation, is quite tense today. On the other hand, we see that Vivi is getting intimidated by Run. She states that she was running away from him out of fear and suddenly Run becomes normal. He starts behaving like an ordinary animal, so Vivi's fear ends, but she gets annoyed and frustrated. Suddenly, Hen appears and is extremely angry at Run. He picks up Vivi to take a look at her body and notices that she's been hurt due to the excessive running. He becomes relieved and decides to treat her when they go back. Furthermore, he threatens to lock her inside his pocket forever if she continues running around like this again. With a disappointed face, Vivi wonders how he's able to say such creepy things with a handsome smile. He then explains all the situations related to the drug to Run who, being in his lion form, fails to understand anything. Ayn gives up and calls him a crazy beast while Run begins to get frustrated. Just then, a group of fierce-looking guys arrive and order a hen to come with them. Vivi notices the hyena worker with them, but is unable to express anything. Surprisingly, Ahin's eyes turn blue and he begs them to spare his life, leaving the jaws of Vivi and run wide open, as they were expecting him to fight back. All of them are taken away by the odd-looking guys and their hands are tied except Vivi. In the wagon, one of the kidnappers offers her a carrot which causes both Run and Ahin to laugh out loud. 
Tired of the humiliation, Vivi expresses that she only wishes to go home now. Afterwards, Ahin reveals that all of this was just an act and part of his plan to infiltrate the enemy camp. He believes the Indelris drug they're looking for must have something to do with these kidnappers. Moreover, he tries out asking Run to transform back into his human form, but Run's expression makes him realize that he cannot. Ahin breaks his hands out of the ropes and Vivi wonders why his eyes have become blue. He reveals that black panthers with strong pheromones are often on the lookout. They disguise themselves as the raccoon clan to induce vigilance and perform underground missions like this one. Ahin removes the ropes from Run's paws and Vivi begins coughing constantly. Suddenly, her pheromones begin acting differently, and Ayn wonders if it's because of the drug. He picks her up and after examining her body realizes Realizes she's about to undergo humanization. Vivi raises her left hand, implying that it's an emergency, and Ahan changes the current plan. He decides to run away and put a hold on the drug case for the time being. He doesn't wish to let the enemy see Vivi in her human form and covers her in a piece of white cloth. Then Ahan effortlessly destroys the iron door, defeats the enemies with his strong aura of panther pheromones, and runs away. Back in the streets of Endorus, Harrington and Everin are still unaware of what's going on. As they are walking, Harrington reveals that the people who took Lord Ahan and Lord Run must have taken them far away from the town center. He also notices the whiff of Vivi's pheromones and wonders if she's a shapeshifter. However, Everin decides to keep it a secret and twists the conversation. Suddenly, Everin detects the smell of decomposed body from a street and rushes towards it and Harrington follows him along. There, they find the dead body of an unknown shapeshifter and Everin notices the weird skin color of his face. He immediately deduces that his cause of death is drug addiction and instructs Harrington to check the dead body's pheromones. Consequently, when Harrington places his finger on the wrist of the corpse, he concludes that the pheromones are unstabilized. Meanwhile, Everin reveals there have been reports of shapeshifters dying after taking the pheromone drug. On the other hand, we see Ahin and Vivi hiding in a closet. Curious, Ayn asks her how long it takes for her to turn into a human and Vivi replies that her shifting is quite random. Moreover, now that she has inhaled the drug, it's even harder to predict when she might transform. Suddenly, they are caught by the same guy who was kind to of Vivi and offered her a carrot. He's a gorilla and his name is Rill, however. Much to their surprise, he saves them by lying to his people. Ayn then wonders if the gorillas are obedient to rabbits because Rill has protected Vivi on almost every occasion. Seeing that the danger has been cleared, Ayn prepares to escape but suddenly, Vivi turns into a human leaving him stupefied. Vivi shows Anne a beautiful smile and seeing her again leaves him speechless. He claims that her mesmerizing eyes look wide open and leave her flustered. She's not able to say anything and he advises her to show him a little sign before she shapeshifts in the future. Adding more to the ongoing situation, he says that every time she feels like she's about to transform, she should start dancing. Consequently, in this way, he'll know it earlier and will be able to escort her to some safe place. Afterwards, he asks her what her reaction would be if Ash suddenly turns into a human. Vivi discerns that she'd be embarrassed and surprised. He then grabs his white hair and begins flirting with her, making her blush. Vivi is then looking at him with a questionable gaze wondering if she's aroused in such a tense situation. While they're flirting with each other, some guys enter the room talking about Run running around crazily. Ayn tells Vivi to get ready because soon they'll be heading home. However, she wonders if she can call the Grace family residence her home yet or not. She falls prey to overthinking and negative thoughts like Ahan no longer needing her wraps around her mind. Consequently, she loses control of her pheromones and begins feeling dizzy. On the other hand, we see Run going on a riot and furious at Ahan for leaving him behind. Meanwhile, Ash runs into Everin and Ahan jumps out the window with Vivi in his hands. Naturally, Everin then runs towards his master and inquires about the person he's holding in pure white clothes. He looks at her face and becomes surprised to see that she's a girl. Ayn doesn't reveal anything and instead asks him to tell him where the nearest clinic is. At this moment, the gorilla also arrives and notices a woman instead of a rabbit in Ahin's arms. Suddenly, a man from the previous gang appears and tries to attack Ayn. Much to everyone's surprise, Ayn releases a vicious wave of his pheromones, which not only defeats him, but also turns the gorilla into a horse. Ahin gets on the horse and rushes to aid Vivi while ordering Everin to follow him. Everin and Ash, however, get a little confused as they were expecting Rill to be part of the gorilla clan. Anyhow, before he could tell Ash to follow Lord Ahin together, she runs away all alone to chase after him. Consequently, Everin forces himself to turn into a panther and follow his master with Vivi. The scene then shifts to Run who finally has turned back into a human and is discovered by Harrington. Run is mad at Ahin for leaving him alone in his animal form. He wishes to get revenge, but Harrington advises him to calm down as there's no need to break the alliance with the panther hair. He's afraid that Run's sister might get extremely mad at him for ruining a political relationship over something so childish. Meanwhile, we see Run contemplating whether he has become attracted to Vivi or not. On the other hand, we witness Vivi reminiscing over a dreadful flashback from the past. 
In her past, she's being taunted by other rabbits, who make fun of her for not being able to transform into a human. She is aware that despite their outward displays of kindness and innocence towards her, they all sincerely detest her. Following that, we see the same scene when Vivi had been abandoned in Panther territory to protect her clan's pride. Back in the present, Ahin and Vivi are riding the horse while he begs her not to lose consciousness. He tries to keep her awake by gently saying that he'll eat her and she jokingly tells him he's nothing more than a malicious beast. Luckily, they reach the doctor's residence and Ahin begins to knock on the door violently. Suddenly, the doctor comes out and instructs them to enter the house. During her treatment, Vivi claims that she's jealous of Ahin because he's the epitome of perfection. He's better at martial arts, has all the good looks and is the next head of the Black Panther clan. Meanwhile, she can't even get out of bed properly and feels like she has been cursed by him. After two hours, the doctor concludes Vivi's case is quite strange because there's been no sign or reaction to the illegal drug. She gives her final verdict and reveals that Vivi's current condition is not because of the drugs. Instead, it's the result of her unbalanced pheromones. Consequently, she gives her an antidote, a pheromone stabilizer, and decides to keep an eye on her for a while. She reveals that the stabilizer isn't good for health in the long run and suddenly, Vivi wakes up, leaving both Ahin and the doctor surprised. She begins crying and says she can't take the pain anymore, causing Ahin to take the matter into his own hands. He proceeds to bite her neck to inflow his pheromones into her body, but the doctor interrupts him. However, he tells her that his pheromones belong to the domination class, which shocks her. Nevertheless, she informs him it's not recommended to bite her neck because a herbivore's body isn't the same as a beast's. She then reveals, although it is safe to let pheromones flow in her body, he should utilize another way instead of using external methods. Ahim then pulls Vivi closer and softly kisses her lips. His pheromones rush into her body and after sharing a long kiss, Vivi's pain gradually disappears. The doctor departs and we see Vivi sleeping peacefully with Ahin observing her continuously. While sitting in a chair, he realizes that today he almost lost himself in her pheromones, which is quite dangerous. Watching her sleep with an adorable face triggers him to tease her, and he gently pinches her nose. During the cute little play, Ahin contemplates that if he lets his guard down, he might get consumed by Vivi's pheromones. He assumes that her overwhelmingly strong pheromones mean she might be the head successor of her clan. However, the head of the rabbit territory, the Ammon family already has a known successor. He contemplates that no matter how small or weak Vivi is, it's impossible to neglect the lineage of the head. Suddenly, he hears a knock on the door and opens it only to meet Everin, who seems sleepless. Everin apologizes for being late and explains there was a person resembling a gorilla who was trembling outside while being make. Despite Everin's attempt to enter the house, Ahavan orders him to wait outside and buzz off for a while. Afterwards, he wonders what'll happen when Vivi soon finds out who the healing pheromones belong to. Since now she's unlocked the ability to become a human, she might leave him and go back home. Although Ahin admits that he doesn't intend to let her return to the rabbit territory even if she wishes to. Later on, he informs Ash that Vivi's a suspicious rabbit who has finally managed to undergo the process of humanization. During her sleep, Vivi recalls a happy flashback with her mother. Her mother tells her that she possesses noble pheromones and when she turns into a human, she'll be acknowledged by everyone. In the present, however, Vivi wakes up and realizes she's still a human. This unusual occurrence shocks her, and she wonders if something is wrong with her body. Suddenly, the doctor comes back with some tea and advises her against stretching too much since she was asleep for two days. The doctor asks if Vivi is feeling better and reveals that Ahin was here just now. He went out to buy some clothes for her and said he'll be back soon. Later on, Vivi becomes surprised to learn that the doctor is a capybara shapeshifter. Despite this revelation, she's impressed by the doctor's friendliness and how nice she was to her. Afterward, Vivi starts thinking about her kiss with Ahin and blushes out of shyness. She also assumes that her healing pheromones are more powerful than Ahin's ruling class pheromones. Unfortunately, she's unable to test this hypothesis as she's afraid it'll turn her into a rabbit again or even cause a seizure. Suddenly, she hears some outdoor activity and encounters an excited Ash waiting for her outside. Much to her surprise, she also comes across Run who looks quite furious because he wishes to take revenge from Ahin. Consequently, he tries teasing Viv but instead gets overpowered and bullied by Vivi and Ash. Just then, Vivi accidentally stumbles and finds herself on Run who romantically states that they're quite close to each other. The situation becomes awkward, and it seems like Everin and Rill have been hiding something. Vivi becomes confused, but everything falls into place when Run admits that he is the one who did it. Later, Ahim returns and witnesses Everin tie to the gorilla shapeshifter. Additionally, he finds a dead messenger hawk and wonders who might be behind it. Suddenly, he catches the scent of Run Mannion's pheromones and quickly assesses the situation. He deduces that Run must have left some sort of message behind. Just then, the gorilla reveals that the lion hair took Vivi with him in her human form, leaving Ahin stunned. In the next scene, we see Run and Vivi sitting in a dressing room where she appears quite anxious. Run comforts her by reminding her that this isn't the first time she has turned into a human in front of him. An agitated Vivi then asks him why he took her away and Run replies that it's because of a certain someone, implying it's Ahin. She tells him to send her back to the doctor's cabin, but Run says he'll take her back once it's dark, and Ahin is absolutely furious. 
As she continues her conversation with him, she realizes that despite his intimidating tone and facial expressions, he isn't a bad person. Moreover, he took care of her intently when they were on their way here, but Vivi believes a hen won't be able to identify Run's true nature. On the other hand, she fears that if she experiences a pheromone attack without a hen next to her, she doesn't know what would happen. Succumbing to thoughts filled with indecisiveness, she lies down with a calm expression. At the end of their conversation, Vivi's clothes arrive and later we see her in a classy outfit sitting at the dinner table with Run. She is surprised to find that a variety of carnivore foods have been prepared for her because up until now, she has only been eating hay. Harrington, who is also present at the table, is shocked because it's the first time he has witnessed Vivi's uniform. He's baffled to learn that she's a shapeshifter and overreacts a bit, but Run interrupts him. Furthermore, Harrington claims he's sensing the strong essence of Anne's pheromones from her body, while Vivi notices her bond with Harrington has changed. She becomes vexed and asks him the reason for being rude to her in their first encounter. Being a timid person, Harrington falls into confusion and fails to give a valid reason. Afterward, Run offers her to taste the luxurious food, but Vivi becomes annoyed. Her patience runs out, she snaps and orders Run to take her back at once. Enraged, she leaves the table and walks out of the mansion to go back by herself. Just then, Run arrives out of nowhere, takes her up in his arms and graciously agrees to carry her home. He expresses regret for disregarding her feelings and Vivi unintentionally tends to his wound. However, she thinks that Ahin has been exploiting her as a passive being solely for her healing abilities. He didn't want her to become a human, since he wanted to take advantage of her healing pheromones for himself. She starts to feel angry, hurt, and betrayed all at once and tells Run that she wishes to return to her rabbit form. It is revealed that Vivi discovered a fact when she became human and returned as a rabbit. When she comes into touch with someone's powerful pheromones, she undergoes humanization. But after using her pheromones, she instantly reverts to her rabbit form. Vivi falls into a state of perplexity and sincerely wishes to turn into a rabbit before she goes back to Ash, Memi, Lady Valence, and Everin. However, an image of a selfish man comes into her mind when she thinks about Ahin and wonders if it's okay for her to return to him. Filled with anger, she runs away and tells Run to stop following her. They both realize that Ahin will arrive here soon, but she proceeds to escape only to find him waiting for her. He becomes joyful to see her and praises her outfit. With relief on his face, he tells Vivi that he was extremely worried for her, and it's the third time she has escaped like this. With her innate anger, Vivi asks him why he was looking for her, to which Ahin replies he thought she would be scared alone. His words give her a sense of satisfaction, and her suppressed anger gradually starts to fade away. Moreover, inside her mind, she is surprised to see a hint and feelings of reassurance wash over her. Just then, Anan tells her that he's going to take her home, and Vivi's heart fills with warmth. He then suggests she jumps off the balcony, assuring her that he'll catch her. Initially hesitant, she feels irritated when Ahin teases her for being afraid. Nevertheless, Ahin urges her to trust him and finally, mustering up the courage, Vivi jumps right into Ahin's arms. Consequently, as soon as she makes contact with him, she turns back into a rabbit and everything falls into place. Back at home, we see that Lady Valence is sad because she hasn't seen Vivi for a week. She also wonders where her useless son, Ahin, is since his grandfather is here and he hasn't greeted him yet. Suddenly, Lady Valence receives a letter that says he'll most likely return tomorrow morning. She also taunts Anne's grandfather for arriving all of a sudden without sending any letter. The grandfather talks about Run saying he has grown a lot since the last time he saw him but still seems a bit sluggish. The grandfather then discusses Anne's father and claims he's nothing more than an irresponsible man. It seems like the grandfather dislikes her daughter's husband because the man has barely given time to his lovely family. Lady Valence then discloses a shocking fact that says, fortunately, Ahin hasn't had a seizure yet. Furthermore, she states that her son is focusing his attention somewhere else for now. However, despite his happy-go-lucky attitude, she hopes to find a cure for him soon. Afterward, she informs her father about Vivi and orders Memi to prepare food for her. On the other hand, we observe Ahin telling the doctor to examine the pheromone drug. He tells Ahin that Vivi hasn't been impacted by the medicine in the slightest, and Ahin commands him to keep the investigation a secret. Following the doctor's departure, Ahin is relieved to learn about Vivi. However, the mud-colored powder makes him feel uncomfortable. Suddenly, Everin appears and begins reading the daily report to him, but Ahin urges him to stay quiet. He then detects the nearby door and instructs Vivi to stop eavesdropping. On the other side, Vivi becomes perplexed and worries that she has been caught. Ahin opens the door and Vivi's unique way of secretly listening to his conversation impresses him. To see Ash and Vivi in a weird stance makes him think this whole scenario is quite funny. Just then, Everin intervenes and asks him about the woman he was with the day they were attacked by werewolves. Ahin, however, replies that there's absolutely nothing he has to tell him. He advises Everin to think about the reason he didn't ask him where Miss Rabbit had been in the past few days. Suddenly, Everin gets struck with a realization and drops the papers in his hands. He perceives that Vivi was finally able to transform and asks Ahin about it. 
He tells him there were no scars of transformation on her body. Based on this information, Everin concludes Vivi's humanization might be a temporary transformation. Still, he decides it's best to keep this confidential and hands a hint at document about Vivi's birthday. Later at night, he returns to his room and starts calling Vivi's name. She reluctantly shows up and Ahin teases her. Vivi becomes annoyed, but when she lies down next to him, she begins to feel nervous. Being unable to exchange words with her makes Ahin frustrated, and he offers to turn her into a human to have a proper conversation. Nevertheless, Vivi in her rabbit form tries her best to make him understand it hurts to undergo humanization. After some difficulty, he finally cracks the code of her sign language. He is also able to understand the pain Vivi went through during her time with the Libyan family. Much to her surprise, he suddenly falls asleep while stating that he'll rip the oppressors into shreds. The next day, a meeting is held to discuss the progress of the pheromone drug. It's revealed that several prisoners from the abandoned building have been captured and interrogated. Despite that, they have failed to gather any important information about the illicit drug. There's one thing, however, the potency of the drug is too high, which indicates that it's been developed by a high-level guild. Moreover, there's a possibility that the production was financed by nobles or wealthy merchants. During the discussion, Run and Ahan begin annoying each other by claiming one is superior to the other. Everin joins the conversation and claims that there's a chance that Miss Rabbit might rule the continent, leaving everyone surprised. Based on his encounter with Vivi, Run assumes she's different from the other shapeshifters. Their argument resumes, but Ahin wins in the end by claiming that lions are the natural enemies of rabbits, whereas Black Panthers don't play a cruel role. Later on, Vivi expresses her feelings of gratitude to Memi for bringing her to the library. She then starts reading a book about the healing class of pheromones. She learns that records regarding the healing pheromones aren't easily obtainable because there are only a few shapeshifters who possess this ability. As she continues reading further about her healing abilities, everything becomes clear and she reaches a conclusion. It is revealed that once she's able to control her pheromones efficiently, she'll be able to transform into a perfect human. Suddenly, she detects a sound nearby and encounters Ahin's grandfather, who is stunned to see a rabbit reading a book. The scene shifts to a memorial ceremony at the Grand Temple where we see all the members of the Valance royal family. Lady Valance notices that Ahin is getting bored and tells him he should have brought Vivi with him. It becomes pretty clear that she is obsessed with Vivi. Ahin, however, recalls how amusingly Vivi reacted when he asked her to accompany him. He realizes that the biggest reason for her refusal is the fact that she despises temples. Ahin wonders the reason behind her hatred and suddenly, Lady Valance tells him there's a large gap between herbivores and beast shapeshifters. Death in the herbivores' territories is uncommon common as leaving a rabbit in its territory. Ayn gets surprised to know that his mother is aware that Vivi's a shapeshifter, and she advises him to put some effort to gain the rabbit's trust. Ayn pays heed to his mother's words and tells her he will need her advice in the future too. Much to his surprise, Lady Valance then states the grandfather is staying in the mansion for Ayn's birthday, which shocks her. With panic on his face, he wonders how the old man would react when he encounters Vivi. Consequently, he calls out Everin and orders him to switch his clothes with him as he rushes to find her. Back at the mansion, Ayn's grandfather thinks the world is going to end soon because he just witnessed a pet rabbit who can understand human speech. He falls into a state of suspicion and confusion, but Meme tells him the rabbit is Lord Ahin's emergency meal. The grandfather, Lord Rillian, gets even more angry and orders Meme to summon Ahin immediately. She informs him that the master is currently at the Grand Temple and won't return before evening. Hearing this, Rillian picks up Vivi and decides to go to the temple by himself. Vivi shows reluctance as she doesn't wish to go there and abruptly turns into a human. Everyone around her gets knocked out including Lord Rillian and she's shocked to notice that her powers have enhanced. She takes the clothes of a servant and goes to Meme to wake her up. However, she realizes if anyone sees her in this state, swords will be pointed toward her neck. She opens the window and finds an innocent-faced Rill glancing at her from the ground. Out of confusion, she instantly requests him to help her. He brings her to a barn and instructs her to wait while he looks for some clothes for her. Before he departs, Rill warns Vivi to keep clear of a horse by the name of Jane. He also says that Jane is Lord Ahin's favorite horse, but because of her temperament, he warns Vivi not to approach her. As soon as Rill goes outside, Jane jumps out of the fence and Vivi becomes scared. However, much to her astonishment, Jane starts licking her face implying that she adores her. An hour later, Rill returns and is surprised to see Jane acting all friendly with Vivi. He then reveals even the stable keeper who takes care of her gets attacked every day, so she's perhaps the only person Jane hasn't attacked yet. Vivi concludes that it must be because of the scent of a hen's pheromones from her body. Rill, however, states he doesn't possess the sense of smell, since he's a herbivore. Vivi then tells him her backstory and Rill gets so emotional that he begins crying. Out of curiosity, Rill asks her if she plans to return to her original territory someday, which leaves her contemplating. She does admit that she's still afraid of the hidden viciousness of the beasts. After some pondering, she replies that she'll indeed go back to the rabbit territory at some time in the future. She then asks Rill how he managed to live among the beasts without any fear. Rill discloses
discloses that he was born in Andalrus and has lived all his life among different clans of beasts. From his experience, he explains that parts of their behavior stem from instinct, but at the end of the day, they're still shapeshifters like himself. Run sympathizes with Vivi, acknowledging that it must have been hard for her to survive in this dangerous place as a tiny rabbit. Suddenly, their conversation gets interrupted when the door bursts wide open and someone dashes inside, leaving them no time to respond. The scene then shifts to Ahin, who returns to the mansion and finds everyone, including his grandfather, lying unconscious on the ground. Confused by the strange scenario, he wakes up Memi, and she tells him how Lord Rillian was forcefully taking Vivi to the temple, but she rebelled, and instantly understands the situation but wonders where Vivi is currently. Back at the barn, night befalls and it is revealed that the frightening person who entered the barn was Ash. However, now Vivi is looking for her because she has suddenly disappeared. She goes outside and notices the wagging tail of panther hiding in the bushes. Assuming it would be Ash, she rushes at him only to find another black panther with a scar on his eye. The unknown panther slowly begins approaching her, and she becomes terrified. She wonders if she should use her pheromones to defend herself or not, but is scared because if she fails, she'll revert into a rabbit. Amid perplexity, a sword comes out of nowhere, shocking the panther and Ahin arrives on the scene. He angrily orders the panther Bara to stay away from Vivi, and turns his attention towards her. Afterward, he picks her up and notices her petrified facial expressions. Suddenly, Ash returns and bites Bara to take revenge for Vivi. This sight leaves Vivi in confusion, and Ahin reveals that both of them are childhood friends, so they often fight like beasts. Furthermore, Ahin tells Vivi that Bara has always liked Ash, so seeing it become close with Vivi might have made Er jealous. That's why it disobeyed the order and tried to attack. Vivi becomes sad knowing that Ahin will decapitate the poor panther for breaking the rule. She then begs Ahin to spare Bara's life, leaving him stupefied as he wasn't expecting her to sense his bloodlust. Despite her plea, he states that he'll kill Bara because the panther went against his orders. Overwhelmed with emotions, Vivi then asks Ahin if she doesn't follow his orders will he kill her as well. Ahin, hoping to regain Vivi's trust, is startled by her response so he chooses to show mercy to Bara and spares his life. He then advises her to take control of Bara so that she may lead him confidently. Later, Rill emerges from the barn and welcomes Ahin right away. However, since Ahin was scheduled to return later, Vivi questions why he left the temple in the first place. Ahin then replies that he was looking for her, and all of a sudden, a pack of black panthers surround them. To Vivi's surprise, Ahin discloses that the panthers reside on the outskirts of the forest and have colonized the territory's border. He summoned them in to assist him since he needed to find her fast. Just then, Vivi collapses from exhaustion and Ahim carries her home. Afterward, when he arrives back at the mansion with Vivi dozing in his arms, Evren confesses his worry over Ahin's reputation. The other servants are all rendered speechless by the sight of a stunning woman in their master's hands as Evren starts to stress Ahin. Following that, Evren and Ahin debate how security should be tightened around Vivi because she's been getting into a lot of sticky situations lately. Ahin remembers each issue, particularly the most recent one where Bara attacked her. Suddenly, Evren informs Ahin that after Vivi becomes a full-fledged human, she may wish to return to her home region. Later, they meet Meme who greets them and Ahin appoints her as Vivi's escort as soon. The guards behind Meme get shocked and wonder how she is so composed, knowing that Master Ahin has brought an unknown woman to his palace for the first time. They assume maybe she's calm because she already knows the identity of the girl. However, Memi's nose suddenly begins to bleed out of anger, and she apologizes to Ahen. Later on, Vivi wakes up and asks her about her nose. Nonetheless, she avoids the question and says that she has prepared a bath for Vivi. After cleaning herself, Vivi changes her outfit and puts on some perfume. She becomes excited and expresses her gratitude to Meme by thanking her. Just then, she prepares to leave, but Vivi stops her and tells her it must have been quite shocking for her to learn that she's a shapeshifter. Meme apologizes for the inconvenience, reassures her she wasn't avoiding Vivi at all. Overwhelmed by her honesty, Vivi hugged her while feeling a sense of relief. Soon, Ahin arrives and asks what they are doing. Meme gets embarrassed and instantly leaves the room. Vivi also becomes shy, says she's going out to give Ash a late night snack. As she goes out, all the guards offer to help her and Vivi gets scared by their bloodthirsty red eyes. Consequently, she concludes it's better to just sleep and returns to the room. Later on, Ahin comes back after taking a bath and finds Vivi wrapped in a white blanket. He nudges her in a lighthearted manner, wondering why she's bunched up on the sofa. Afterwards, we see Vivi taking a sip of tea while reproaching Ahin at the same time. The sweet and savory taste of the tea overwhelms her with contentment, and she contemplates how she'll be able to enjoy the delicious drink every day if she becomes a human. Ahin tells Vivi to come to bed if she's finished drinking her tea, and she begins blushing. Indecisive about her next move, Vivi quietly 
quietly wraps herself in the white blanket and lies down on the sofa while saying goodnight. She opens her eyes after hearing a sudden cry of anguish to find a hen writhing in pain on the bed. She rushes on the bed to help him and wonders what to do, but it was all a prank played by a hen to get Vivi on the bed. Of course, she becomes extremely frustrated, but a hen pulls her closer to himself. He gently asks her the reason for avoiding him and Vivi angrily states that's because she's constantly conscious of his presence. Since she's no longer a baby rabbit, she claims they're nothing more than two healthy adults sharing a bedroom. A hen enjoys teasing her and asks her to say whatever it's on her mind. Just then, Vivi tells him she'll sleep on the sofa while she's in human form. She gets ready to leave, but Hin interrupts her by acting like a cute baby. After that, regardless of his desire for Vivi to accompany him in bed, Hin wraps her in a different blanket to minimize any needless exchange of pheromones between them. He strictly instructs her not to touch him as it can lead to danger. However, much to his surprise, Vivi asks Hin if he's okay, but he dodges the question. Instead, he begins talking about her transformation and the pain she feels during it. She informs of her encounter with his grandfather. Based on her information, Ahin concludes she must have been exposed to his grandfather's pheromones resulting in her humanization. He then ironically tells her to kick his grandfather with her hind legs the next time they meet. Just then, Ahin apologizes to her for taking her to the temple before leaving Vivi in a state of confusion. Out of all things, she never expected Ahin to acknowledge his own mistake and apologize. This gesture fills her heart with warmth, and while they're sharing a romantic moment, she requests him to set her free. She squares on her life that she won't touch him, and after a lot of begging, he finally frees her. Soon, when they both are sleeping, Vivi starts feeling uncomfortable and wakes up in the middle of the night. She opens her eyes only to find a huge black panther sleeping next to her. She assumes it's Ash, but suddenly recalls that Ash is sleeping in Meme's room. Terrified, she then wonders who this Black Panther is. Out of fear, Vivi falls off the bed and rolls into a corner of the room. Just then, Hen's hawk enters the room and clenches its claws on her head. She points toward the panther and asks if he knows who he is. The hawk smirks at her and repeatedly pecks her head. Amidst the chaos, she notices Anne's gown next to the sleeping panther and realizes that he's indeed a hen. Afterwards, she discreetly moves closer to him and asks if he's okay. The panther remains silent and Vivi deduces something is wrong. She knows that shapeshifters only transform into their animal form when there's something wrong with their body. Worried, she continuously tries waking him up, but nothing happens. Thinking that he must be in pain, she prepares to seek help, but the panther catches her by his tail, implying for her not to leave. Consequently, she asks him if he wants her to treat him. Suddenly, he opens his eyes and turns away indicating that he doesn't wish her to. His moody response exasperates Vivi, and she refuses to cure him. She claims that she doesn't care if he's getting hurt or not, but her decision abruptly changes, and she decides to pat him instead. Ayan opens his eyes and wiggles his tail to remind Vivi of their promise not to touch him at all. Vivi thinks he's mocking her, so she smacks his bum and calls him a sly beast. Soon, she understands the reason why Ahin doesn't want her to call Evren or the doctor. She concludes that he doesn't want rumors to spread. She then recalls a flashback with the lay physician from some days ago, during which it was revealed that the beast shapeshifters are naturally cruel. They are in constant conflict, always looking for a chance to take advantage of each other's vulnerability to gain power. However, Vivi then reveals that although there are many power struggles among the rabbits, they never reach the point of killing each other. She reassures him to trust her because she's just a mere rabbit and can't harm him in any possible way. Suddenly, she lies down on the bed and invites him to hug her. Tempted, he immediately complies with her request, and despite his gigantic size, she tightly holds him in her arms because he's a hen. During their cuddling, she apologizes to him for lying earlier, for saying that she doesn't care if he's sick or not. As the night passes, the panther and Vivi gradually fall asleep. The next morning, we see that Vivi has returned to her rabbit form. However, a hen's vicious hawk, Quentin has ruined her breakfast, so she dashes at him and knocks him out cold. On the other hand, Evren and Ahan are watching the scene from the opposite side of the room. He tells Ahin that Vivi truly possesses the spirit of a ruler on the battlefield and Ahin agrees since handling Quint isn't an easy task. Suddenly, one of Ahin's servants approaches Vivi and asks if she requires anything at all. She instantly realizes that this servant is the same guy whose clothes she had stolen during her encounter with Lord Relian. Feeling guilty, she apologizes to him for her nasty behavior, leaving him naked on the floor. A jealous Ahin then intervenes and accuses the rabbit of cheating on him. Evren also joins in and recalls all the times Vivi has interacted with Lord Run. Consequently, Ahin coldly stares at her claiming she had just made a promise with him last night of never abandoning him again. Vivi assumes he's going to bite her, but he gives her a quick and light kiss instead. He then asks her to accompany him to work while Vivi is left confused and wondering what just happened. 
The scene then shifts to the Livian household where we see Vivi's mother, Avon sulking at the death of her son Carrie. She hasn't left the room in days and it's revealed that Carrie had lost his life to a ferocious storm. Avon's mental health has been affected a lot because she lost her precious shapeshifter child. She expresses feelings of sorrow since has spent 20 years of her life in a loveless marriage just to bear a child for the sake of power. Now he's dead and her life has been ruined because she doesn't have children left. Suddenly, a servant arrives with shocking news, telling Avon that the next head of the Black Panther clan has a pet rabbit. Furthermore, she discloses that there will be a birthday celebration for the head of the rabbit clan, and Ahin may arrive with his pet to attend the party in a few days. Upon hearing this, Avon wonders about the possibility of the rabbit being Vivi. Back at the Grace family residence, Ahin engages in a conversation with his grandfather about Vivi. Ahin warns him that if he mistreats her again, he'll personally send him back to the academy. The old man calls him an imprudent kid who hasn't even greeted his grandfather despite meeting him after several months. Meanwhile, Ahim shows no interest and expresses his disgust over the tasteless tea. He then orders the servant to bring him something better, which infuriates the old man. Lord Relian calls him an immature boy who doesn't know how to enjoy tea while Ahim drinks his hot cocoa. Out of frustration, he claims that Ahim has forgotten all the things he has taught him. However, Ahim calmly replies that he's wise in conduct, is aware of his position, hides his feelings, doesn't get swayed by death, and never gets overwhelmed by loss. Ahin then mockingly claims that he's doing quite well, causing his grandfather to slam the table out of rage. He criticizes Ahin for not showing him a speck of gratitude despite causing outrageous troubles all the time. Lord Reliance's chest begins burning up, and he reveals this because of Vivi's strong pheromones. Just then, Relian asks Ahin to tell him about his relationship with Vivi and how he found her. Ahin says he found her abandoned in a forest six months ago. He then asks the old man what it means to bite someone's neck, leaving him dazed and confused. Afterwards, Ahin tells him that the rabbit has already bitten his neck and he's nothing but food to her. Just before leaving, Ahin warns his grandfather to avoid messing with Vivi because he'll end up bleeding. Lord Relian then falls into a state of shock and wonders if he'll be able to recover from this traumatic experience. Some days later, Vivi is having a tea party with Lady Valance, who expresses her feelings of sorrow over the library incident with Ahin's grandfather. She advises Vivi to stay away from Lord Relian during his time at the mansion. Vivi then informs her that Ahin has already imposed his retribution on the old man. Lady Valance then compliments Vivi on her abilities to lead her beasts, noting that they seem to follow her more closely than she had anticipated. She then guesses it's due to Vivi's distinct pheromones. Vivi, on the other hand, informs her that Bara is acting all nice in front of her. In real life, he bullies her when they're alone and blames it on her wonderful bond with Ash. She attempts to explain everything to Lady Valence, but she doesn't get it. Lady Valence, intrigued, instructs Vivi to do it again, and this time she tries to tell her what happened to Ahin the night before. Much to her disappointment, Lady Valence still misinterprets Vivi's message and thinks she is inquiring about the weaknesses of Black Panthers. Later that evening, Ahin comes back to his room to see a cardboard box waiting for him. Vivi figured Ahin would enjoy playing with it because Ash and Bara do, but watching his facial expressions makes her reconsider her idea. Ahin, to her astonishment, agrees to sit in the box solely to fulfill her requests. He then gives her a pocket watch encrusted with ferinium, a costly gemstone. He then adds that she can use it to store her overflowing pheromones, which makes Vivi very happy. Following that, he asks Vivi if she requires the gemstone, to which she nods. Ahim believes she no longer requires his services, therefore he compares himself to the jewel. He indicates that he is superior in terms of power and limitations, yet Vivi never appears to need him as much as she wants the stone. Vivi realizes he must have been feeling untrustworthy and wonders why she has been doubting him. Since Ahin learned about her healing pheromones, she is worried whether Ahin was merely interested in keeping her close for his gain. She is sorry for her behavior and extends her paws to him, hoping to clear up any confusion. Ahin is astonished and informs her that this is the first time she has contacted him without being suspicious. Vivi, who is embarrassed, flees out of his grasp, but he catches up to her and kisses her on the back. Vivi blushes at his actions and wonders what has gone wrong with this insane panther. And that's how the first part of this manhwa ends. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2, also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.